Welcome to the Addiction Connection podcast, connecting the hope of the gospel with the heart of addiction. I'm your host, Mark Shaw. And today's topic is identity, and we have a very unique podcast format, at least for me. Uh, we have three people in studio, socially distanced away <laughs> from each other, not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have Oliver Underwood, Kirby Johnson, and last but certainly not least, Bethany Roseberry here in Kentucky. Amen. Welcome. Thank Thanks you. For us. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be uh, this is going to be challenging having you three. These mm-hmm. are three wild horses here. <laughs> All right. I want to read Second Corinthians five seventeen, which says, "Therefore, if anyone is in Christ." He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And I want to make this podcast all about identity. And so the question to the group is, how does your identity impact your daily life? That's good. I um, I can just think back when I was... A church several a couple years ago at out in Washington State, and my teacher and in that um, in church group that morning said, you know, it took me about twenty years to under truly understand what my identity was in Christ, and I just and that kind of had an impact on me. I was like twenty years to really understand his identity. So to to truly understand that, I think is important. Um, as we grow in Christ and as, you know, the sooner you understand that, the better I think you'll be in your daily walk and, um, and a blessing to others as well. All right. So 20 years, Kirby says, this gentleman wrestled with identity. Mm-hmm. How long did it take you, Oliver? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I think it's still a struggle. I think that identity, you know, when we behold him, and he comes for us, and we are in his presence, I think that issue is going to be gone, and we are going to see him for who he is and us for who we are in Christ. And so I'm looking forward to that day. But honestly, I think that's the struggle every single day, and we we are working at it. And I think that's one of the reasons why we need to be just saturated in God's word because really it's speaking to God's relationship with us and who we are to him. Mm. It's all about identity, and without washing our minds in that, our tendencies are to look elsewhere to establish a false identity. That's good. Mm-hmm. And I think for men, the, the men folks in the, in the room, we tend to get work, accomplishments, mm-hmm. success, and so our identity gets kind of tied into that very easily for us, whereas we're not human doings, we're human beings. Mm-hmm. We're, it's not about what we do, it's about who we are in Christ. Mm-hmm. So Bethany... Straighten us dudes out. (laughs) I mean, I agree with what Oliver said. Um, I absolutely have to remind myself of that every morning because um, as much as I know that my relationship with Christ is not based on what I do, I tend to revert back to that. Um, So I even have a sticky note on my little end table where I sit every morning and it says, Um, relationships over checklists because, uh, and that applies to God and to my family and everything else because my MO is to do things, to get things done, to see the, I want to see validation from the things that I've done. And really God doesn't ask us to do, like you said, he asks us to be. So sometimes that looks like reading a verse. Sometimes I get through a couple of chapters, but the purpose is to just sit at the feet of Jesus um, and to be willing to let go of whatever it is that I have for the day, um, because otherwise my identity is I feel good about myself when I get things done. Um, but Christ says there's nothing that you've done to make yourself worthy. And so um, just to remember that my works are filthy rags and that um, he doesn't ask me to do anything today in order for him to love me and accept me. Mm. That's good. Pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have Bethany here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, that's excellent. I, you know, I know some people think that they miss out. You know, with social media, it's easy to 
look at the fun other people are having and you start to to miss out. You think you're missing out on stuff. Um, how does that play into identity when you think, you know, I'm missing out or you're, you're discontent maybe? Um, any thoughts about that? Like this person sees people celebrating at a birthday party and they start to think, man, I'm stuck at home. Mm-hmm. Well, home's a great place to be. Some people don't have homes, mm-hmm. you know, and so you have to flip your thinking. I guess that's really my point is you have to flip your thinking and, and help yourself to be grateful. And, and, um, and with identity, I think it's the same kind of thing. With identity, it's not letting myself, like you said, Bethany, the checklists and the, you know, recognizing that I get to be with Jesus today. That there's no greater thrill than knowing that Jesus is right here with us, even right now. Yeah. You know that that's the thrill of the day. So, how do you guys mm-hmm. check your thinking? Or well, again, like you said, it's just the thinking or our thoughts, our emotions. Our, and our actions, which are, are usually going to take us the wrong way because a lot of times you feel left out if you're not on social media websites. You kind of feel, and for me, it's like a daily um, denying my flesh a lot of times because I'm in Christ. And to, so that's my prayer a lot of times is to understand that more in my life is like, Lord, help me to know mm-hmm. who I am in you. And I'll pray that daily, you know, just mm-hmm. to, um, and, um, it is big, the social media things, uh, mostly for the younger generation, right? It's like to help them understand who they are in Christ as well, I think is huge. What about the person who says, I'm an alcoholic? Mm. What about that for identity? I think that that is, that has been taught to them. I don't think that that's something that somebody would say that had never heard that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, going back to your your what do you, your question, what do you do with this, you know? And and I think, I mean, you know, people don't like skeptics, but at the same time, I think I I I'm better off when I think that everything in the world is a lie except for God's word, mm. everything, and not not to to not trust anybody or not, you know, mm-hmm. to not care about anybody, but to just start there is good because otherwise we're filtering things through our own deceitful hearts, you know? And so the, the guy who says, you know, I am an alcoholic or I am an addict and I will always be an addict, he's adopted something. He's really adopted an identity that is really a manifestation of just what he what he does. He, he his, What he does is become who he is, you know, and... Um, that's the, the amazing part about Christ is that who we are are really is because of what he's done. You know? mm-hmm. That's good. You approve of that, Bethany? Is that I okay? do. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> yeah. She approves this yeah. message. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the social media thing that you were talking about a little bit, that made me think about, um, I feel like the social media thing has to do with likes. It's not about, oh, I want what that person has, like stuff. I mean, maybe, maybe a little mm-hmm. bit of that, you know, lust of the eyes kind of a deal or lust but, of the flesh, boastful pride of life. But it's like they're wanted, they're desired. Look at how many, I mean, who cares mm-hmm. about anybody in social media who doesn't have any friends? You know, I mean, it's it's always about the person who, man, that's got like 20,000 followers and mm-hmm. 1,500 likes. You know, that's mm-hmm. going viral. That's the yeah. thing, right? If you're on, on the internet, viral is the thing. Bigger is better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in that yeah. world. So yeah. It's that desire that that desire to be desired. Yeah. We all want that. Mm-hmm. And I think it's to be seen too. As soon as I think Kirby said it first, but I was thinking about I've been reading through the Old Testament and Deuteronomy and um Moses is reminding them of everything as they are coming out of Egypt and they're about to go into the promised land and you re retells back what has happened um, and their suffering. And it's the God who sees, the God who knows, the God who hears. And so I think we can look for the seeing, the knowing, and the hearing from the people around us. But when we rest in, God knows. God knows what I've done today. I don't need to validate that um, 
I know this is something that I've struggled with too. And I think lots of people have, but it's, you are known, even if nobody sees what you've done today, even if no one likes what you've done today or loves what you've done today or laughs at what you've said today, God knows you, God sees you and God hears you. Um, And so I think that's just a a daily reminder of like, I have got to remind myself Mm -hmm. of that because I can get that, that missing, I feel like I'm missing out on something and it's not true. Um, I was sharing this with some other people this past week. Um, but I came back from a wedding where um, people were drinking and I was sober. Um, and But I had a great time. But I found myself coming back and thinking that I was missing out on the lifestyle. Mm. Um, and I really had to remind myself that what I have in Christ is good. The things mm-hmm. that he has given me are good. The life that I have is good because he has given it to me and everything that he does is good. And so even if it looks different than it used to or than someone else's, that it's good because that's where he has me and he's good. And so what he does is good. Amen. Amen. That's so good. I just yeah. love that. That's why we have yeah. Bethany yeah. right here. <laughs> well, yeah. I, was talking to, I was talking to a guy who lost his wife, and I, and I said, do you miss her? And he said, no. And that almost sounds like, wow, what a cold-hearted guy. Like, he's glad she's gone. He's like, no, of course I miss her in little ways, but I have to remind myself she's with Jesus. Mm. She's a believer, was a believer, and she's with Jesus, and that she wanted to be a grandparent, but she's not missing out. Nothing about Mm -hmm. where she's at right now is she missing out. Like she is, just what you said, Bethany, she's enjoying being in the presence of of God Almighty, and He says, "When I think about that, I, th- I rejoice for her." Amen. You know, yeah. and I thought that's a powerful thought. That's what the world needs to hear today: is not, "Oh, I wish she were back. I wish she could, you know, make me meals, or we could go on walks together." And mm-hmm. she's not missing any of that at all. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just thought that was a powerful yeah. thing, and so we we do have to remind ourselves about God is good, and where He has me is good, and I'm not missing out on. Mm-hmm. you know, on the things that I think I are going to satisfy me because they yeah. don't, mm-hmm. they don't satisfy. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I keep looking at Oliver. I don't know, you want me to say something? <laughs> I thought you yeah. had something to say. I, no, I got, I got a verse, you know, I mean, this is, this is a verse that we all know very well, but I think this is so, so good these days about, um, you know, you read, that, that scripture um, out of Corinthians about um, being a new creation. And and 1 Corinthians 6 says this, you know, and such were some of you. So even if, let's just say, you do, you are an alcoholic. Like, let's just call you an alcoholic. Sure, you're, you're an alcoholic, you're a liar, you're a thief, you're a selfish, you're, you're all of those things combined in your condemned nature apart from Christ. But in Christ, that's past. Mm-hmm. You are you are no. It's not like you're you're kind of still that you know, and and some of that old person might show mm. up every now and then. But it says, and such were some of you, and this is in First Corinthians six eleven. But but okay, you were washed, mm-hmm. you were sanctified, and you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And that, mm. that what good news for those who put their faith in Christ that you, if you say I am an alcoholic. You are not trusting God's word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are speaking false things into your mind, and you are preaching false things to the world. And we need to hear more of this. You were, if you were in Christ, you were. You are no longer that person, and thank God for that. I, I yeah. think, Oliver, it makes it easier to label yourself as an alcoholic as well to the flesh. Like, that is your. if that's your identity, a lot of times you can also use that as a crutch, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's who I am. This is something I'm going to have to be for the rest of my life, mm-hmm. um, and it's there's no there's no hope in that. Mm-hmm. You're kind of in bondage to that, mm-hmm. rather than when you're in Christ. There's freedom there, because mm-hmm. that's what He's came to do is set us free. Yeah, I think if you say I'm an alcoholic or or any of these labels in verse nine of First Corinthians six, you know the section of moral idolater, drunkard, whatever it is, then you're and you're born again. And you're saying, and you're confessing, oh, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an addict, I'm a this. 
then you're denying the rest of what you read in verse 11, mm. that you're washed, mm-hmm. that you're sanctified, that you're justified. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're standing. Not that we're not going to be tempted to sin. We all get sure. that. But that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. That's I've been washed. Mm-hmm. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. I'm wearing the robe of righteousness that Christ gives me. Mm-hmm. It's his robe. It's not mine. Mm-hmm. And I get to wear that. And when God sees us, he sees us as righteous. He's pleased. I'm not trying to earn it. I love the idea of being at rest. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not striving for God's approval. We're not striving, trying to do the next right thing. We're not trying to grow a, a big ministry mm-hmm. or have a lot of likes or have a lot of followers. When you get caught up in all that rat race kind mm-hmm. of thing, the, the culture, you miss out on really what's important, which is the people that are right here around you in this moment, you know? I can get caught up looking at my phone and missing the very people that are in the room mm-hmm. that I need to be loving and ministering right. to. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's a good word. When I think about being like Christ, being like God, I, I love Exodus 34 in verse 6. God is showing Moses his glory, He's passing before him and proclaims, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And what I love about that, I mean, there's lots of things to love about that, Mm -hmm is um, the first word that God says about himself, he's merciful. In other mm-hmm. words, he doesn't give us what we deserve. Amen. Mm-hmm. And, and I know someone in my life who's very merciful, and I think, man, I want to be more like that because that's being like God, you know? And when I see that person act mercifully, I think, wow, that's, I lack that. I want to be more like that, you know? And and all this identity stuff is like we get to be lost in Christ and become more like him. And what a what a privilege. Um, but it's not just, oh, I get to enjoy God's, the fruit of the Spirit. I get to in, experience that. It's, yes, I enjoy it in a sense, but it, he, he produces fruit through us so that we can be a blessing to other people. And, you know, and I think about, during the last year or so, with all the uh, fear that's just been around, is did I exhibit the fruit of the Spirit, the, the particular fruit of peace? Did people see me as a peaceful person? Did they see me that way? Or did they see me as somebody who runs and hides and panics? And, you know, I just had a conversation with a lady who was like, when she first heard, that this virus might kill people and all that. She was like, I've got to be more urgent and went out to evangelize more people Mm -hmm. because she sensed an urgency. Mm -hmm. And I thought, man, we locked up in our house for a week or two. Mm -hmm. And she went out risking her life at that point. We didn't know Mm -hmm. what this virus was and any of that. Um, But she went out because of the urgency. And I just think, Man, I, you know, it was very convicting talking to her. So, mm. um, but, you know, I'm, I'm on a bunch of different things here, but just thinking about my identity and being secure in that and knowing where I'm going to be, I'm going to be in heaven. I don't need to be fretting about all these other things that the world mm-hmm. would have me be fearful about. Yeah. Amen. I think according to the world and identity, there is um, an aspect of community when you accept that alcoholism is your identity Um, because otherwise it feels like you're alone in that. And of course we know that that's not the truth. We know that when we're a child of God, we have the church of Christ. We, we know that we're adopted, but a step further than that, we, I read something this past week and I can't quote it because I don't remember everything um, that I read, but um he talked about having the DNA of Christ. When we actually have Christ living in us, we get to exhibit his attributes. And so, and we get the body of Christ. So we're not doing it alone. So as much as you're not going with 
the crowd, the 12 step crowd, you're not having that camaraderie in the same sense, but you have something better because it's not just alcoholism that binds you together, right? It's not like we, you don't have to be an alcoholic. We're all sinners. And so we can all relate on that level. And then at the foundation of that is Christ. And so as long as we have that, it doesn't really matter what else we have in common. And so it's such a greater binder than alcoholism ever could be. So mm-hmm. it's just, it's and it's so much more hopeful. Like you said, we don't yeah. have hope right. um, when, when that's just who I am and that's who I'm always going to be. And mm-hmm. yes, I'm going to be a sinner, but I'm accepted, I'm loved, and I have a choice today. God calls me to be holy. And so if he calls me to do that, then he's going to give me the grace to do that. And so my identity isn't about how many times I fail today, but again, about being a child of God. I am a child of God. I'm wanted. I'm loved. I'm accepted. Um, and reminding ourselves of that because otherwise it's it's hopeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it glorifies us. I think it brings glory to God too, the more that we can understand that and apply that in our walk while we just, you know, while we're running this race that we, in Christ, and I, I think the more that we, Live that out. It it just glorifies God at the same time. And that's mm-hmm. yeah, that's good. That's what it's all about. That glorifying is. Him. Mm-hmm. And isn't it neat to think about all four of us used to be vessels of wrath, mm-hmm. people who were caught up in the wrong things, influencing people to do wrong things, and now we sit here. God's called us out of darkness into His light mm-hmm. to help people to do the right things. Yeah. You know, which is worship. Worship him, Mm -hmm. serve him, live for him. I mean, that's a very sobering thought, no pun intended, or maybe there is a pun intended. (laughs) I'm sure there is with you. (laughs) But that's that's an awesome thought to think, man. Only and only God can do that. Only God can transform, you Mm -hmm. know? And so now we get to help people. And I, I love that. And it's hard. It's hard work. Not everybody wants to be helped. Not everybody's ready to be helped. Not everybody wants to be helped in a biblical way. Uh, they want help, but they don't want biblical help. And uh, and God's called us to glorify him, as you just said, Kirby. So. Any final words on identity before we wrap up? Listeners only have so so long that's, of an that's attention true. span. That's true. Depends <laughs> on how far away they are. <laughs> right. Huh. Um, yeah, no, I had a thought, but I think it's, I think it's flying away right now. Your so. thought? Oh, mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. too young to have, uh, what do they call those? Senior well, when, moments. Well, when you drive from Iowa all night, and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we uh, we had a long drive. Mm. Oh yeah, CJ's I, fault. It, it's back. It's back now. So, <laughs> so um, addiction. I th- I think when you're talking about the guy who who's I am an alcoholic. Mm. Do you think that not only you brought up a really good point about ha- having community? Like, man, I can I can mm-hmm. identify with these mm. people. But what about as an individual? Everybody else excluded. What about taking personal satisfaction and having something that you can, you're having victory in? Like, this is my victory, oh, yeah. mm. my strength, my, mm-hmm. you know, I, yeah, I got my problem, I got my struggle, but I'm also, man, I got my 10 day yep. thing going on right now. And I got, and, and they're very quick because people are, want people to be doing well, right? They don't want them to be destroying their lives, mm-hmm. but they're very quick. Man, I'm, I'm 30 days sober, I'm mm-hmm. 31 and a half days sober, and, and that's great. We want sober people, but at the same time, I think there's this, Self exaltation in those mm-hmm. those identity things of I am, therefore I can have personal victory, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, we get caught up in either extreme, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but you know, w- when it's Christ, it's it's every every good thing comes from above, and like He is working in us and mm-hmm. changing us, and He is faithful to complete the work that He started in us, and it's never us changing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're making much of Christ the entire time. Amen. Yeah, you provoked me to thought. That's good. I, I just want to say that I'm still, when you said that we're sitting here and used to be children of wrath, and I look over at Oliver and I see Bethany and you, and it's just like I never would have seen myself sitting here five years ago uh, amongst a, mm-hmm. a group of men and women who love the Lord, whose lives are being transformed. Um, I just, it just, it, it's, it's such a good feeling to be in Christ amongst a family of like-minded people who mm-hmm. love the Lord. Yeah. So, we just went to that wedding a couple of days ago, and wasn't it just great? Mm-hmm. I mean, just the celebration, the thought of mm-hmm. new life, 
they're getting married, they're celebrating and what Christ has done, the union. It's just such a beautiful picture. And yet people think of marriage as, you know, an institution that jails us and it's a ball and chain and just all the wrong thoughts about yeah. that. And um, yeah, what you're talking about, being in a new family, having a new identity in that sense, yeah. you know, to be brothers and, and sisters in Christ is Amen. special. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, good thoughts. Bethany, last words? I don't want to... I think you guys have said it all. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for listening to our podcast. This was a good roundtable experiment. We might do this again one day. We'll see. Or, well, I won't say what I was going to say. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> if Oliver's good, we'll do it again. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And- next time.